Good weekend, everybody. How are you? I am staying inside this week instead of painting out. Unfortunately, my throat's been a little scritchy and I just didn't want to push it. But instead, I thought I'd share with you some of the books in my extensive watercolor library. And uh, this time I thought I would show you the books that most helped me out when I was starting out and really didn't have a single clue about what I was doing. So come on, let's go check it out. Okay, uh, first up we have The Art of Watercolor, A Guide to the Skills and Techniques by Ray Campbell Smith. Ray Campbell Smith was a really well-known instructor in the UK in the you know, 80s and 90s, and this was the first watercolor book that I ever purchased with my own hard-earned cash. The appeal to me, I think, it was the first book I'd come across, because I'd checked out a lot of watercolor books in the library. But this was the first one that really broke things down in a way that I understood and I was like, I have to have this book. It's not in the library. I have to purchase it with my own money. And as to influence, uh, I would say this was where I really first started applying myself, learning the, the British landscape technique when it came to clouds. Uh, it's a very English look how they do their clouds and I felt uh, that uh, Ray really was keeping to that tradition you know just like Sago just like you know all the all the great British watercolorists they're very well known for their skies because well English weather <laughs> that's what they have is cloud and that's where I first got my palette for my raw sienna light red and ultramarine and I've you know expanded upon that of course greatly but this was the first time I saw okay this is what I want to make is art that looks very traditional and a lot of the modern watercolor books at the time weren't doing that this was kind of a throwback nobody wanted to do the old ways of doing it and he was one of the very few that had put out a, a new book that was talking about this and there's just lots of demonstrations very simple and the other big influence that this book had on me was he has a whole chapter on painting outside. And uh, at the time, I know it's hard to believe, but uh, there wasn't as many people doing that, or at least they hadn't found each other online, which is what happened when social media really took off. And you'd be all out there by yourself, you know, painting. You had no idea if anyone else was doing the same thing, unless you were in an art school or something like that. Uh, but even then, it wasn't as much encouraged. The art world wasn't as focused on realism or landscape art. That was kind of shoved aside. And so reading this was actually revelatory <laughs> to me at the time. You know, talking about, you know, how to do it, how to go about it. So this book really kicked the ball for me getting going on traditional British style outdoor landscape painting. So to me, this was one I checked out over and over at the, the library. And Jack Reed is another gentleman who did a lot of extensive workshopping and writing books. He, he wrote lots of books on watercolor, uh, but this is the one that I recommend to anyone who's starting out and it just covers just about anything and everything. But in addition to you know, the usual basics, you know, the materials and this and that. He had some unique things that a lot of books didn't have that were very helpful for me. One of them was the brush exercises. He actually shows, you know, the different kinds of brushes, what they can do. And uh, once again, it, maybe it seems really commonplace now because you can just look it up online and go, oh yeah, of course. But at the time I was like, oh, all these different marks you can make. And he even had a really unique way of practicing it. You know, this is what you do and you can use newspaper and don't waste a lot of expensive paper doing your exercises. So that alone was really useful in this book. Another thing that I found really super helpful was he would break down values and for some people that, you know, they get so caught up in color that they forget values, which is 90% of your painting success. And so he starts out with sepia or any other, you know, basic brown color and shows how you build up from your drawing, you know, your lightest values and then to your darkest values. It's a very traditional way. Not everybody does that. But if you're just starting out, it was really, really helpful. And uh, then, I mean, and what's really cool is he'll start with one color, then two colors and so on, uh, different exercises. 
until you build up you know, your whole thing. And he also had lots of uh, painting projects. Uh, a lot of watercolor books don't take things step by step and he'll do that. He, he'll take you, you know, exactly like this is what you do, here's what you do, you know, each one step by step, building it up. Uh, my only complaint was it was kind of off-centered and weird, so you kind of had to, you know, use your head, but I'm guessing they just didn't have the camera set up that would have been optimal for this because while you're working wet you got to just keep moving. And uh, so, you know, once again you get these beautiful simple projects step by step and they were just so useful at the time. And once again, what, you know, after 25 years teaching, I think he taught for like at least 40 years or more by the time uh, he passed. And what people don't realize is that there's lots of watercolor books out there and artists, you know, who, who make books. But if you don't have the one-on-one -on -one with students and getting feedback, uh, it's really hard to understand the beginner mindset and where they're at. And when you've taught people in, in person for that long, uh, it really gives you a bit of wisdom uh, in order to help where they're at. When you are seeking out even new books, check them up, like find out, you know, they could be the most amazing artist in the world, but if they don't have that experience with teaching, that's a different skill set. There's, there's beautiful art and then there's teaching and very seldom you get both in the same person. And so some people, they'll look at, you know, they might overlook a book like this that seems very simplistic and how they do it. But that's what you need when you're starting out. You need it nice and simple. Then I have saved the best one for last. Well, not the best, they're all excellent books. But this book here, The Watercolorist's Essential Notebook, this is my prime document. This is the book that I went back to time and time again for almost 10 years. I checked it out at the library over and over and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna just buy it because it's that useful to me. Uh, Gordon McKenzie, he put out all kinds of books, uh, but this one kind of summed it all up in one go. And what I got from this book more than anything else was he was the first author that really broke down pigments for me and maybe you know now that we have the internet it's a lot easier to find information on pigments but at the time it was who knows why some paints were successful you didn't have anybody who brought them all in one place and compared them in a way that made sense or at least to me and so he would you know talk about choosing colors choosing palettes you know showing you what paint you know the companies even and how they compare against one another. Because a lot of watercolor instructors, they'll just say, you know, use Prussian blue without explaining which Prussian blue. They all have different mixtures. Some of them aren't even the same pigment. And he was also the first one that showed me to look up the pigment number, you know, like PR48, you know, it just means, you know, pigment red 48. And you can compare them against others. And, you know, some of them fade and a lot of books didn't explain that. And I would be like, well, why is this, you know, areole and yellow turning brown? I don't understand. And this was the first book that actually broke that down for me in a way that was understandable. And there have been lots of new pigments that have come onto the market since this book came out in the 90s, but it was just a good place to start from, demystify all of the marketing terms that they were putting out there. And, uh, and this gentleman was also a cartoonist, and so he made a point of doing a lot of his own illustrations instead of photographs to show you different things, and was really into do-it-yourself and would make stuff. and. And what I found super helpful was he would talk about, you know, how paints interact with water and really broke it down very succinctly. Uh, because once again, when you're starting out, you don't quite understand how all this works. And this chapter was really super helpful. I came back to it over and over again. And once again, his illustrations. And another section that a lot of other books didn't cover, they, may, they might mention masking fluid or scraping things up, but this, he actually had a unique technique in that he would use masking tape and a Zacto knife and, and do that instead of the, the goopy liquid. And that actually has a lot of applications, especially when you're out painting plein air or painting somewhere where you don't have time for that goopy stuff to dry. And it's, it's just very efficient and cool. And he laid it all out. And that is definitely one of the techniques I've used in the field quite a bit. And he was also really heavy on composition. 
he dedicated pages and pages to it. And also, once again, with the color, he was very specific about, you know, setting up your palette, all the different kinds of palettes. And that was a revelation to younger me. And I didn't understand that when they talk about the three primary colors, it really varies on what your purpose is, what you're trying to do. And so he explained all of that and how to even lay them out in a convenient way. And, and lastly, he had a very helpful section on intuition, how to paint with intuition. It's something that's really hard to teach, but he actually tried to explain it in very simple terms, the things that can hold you back, the things that can keep you from staring at your photographs too long or working too small, and the doubts and the fears that work on you. Very, very succinct, very helpful little section here that he had at the end, and it, you know, and I really appreciated that as a newcomer to the medium. Cool stuff. Okay, well, there you have it. Those are uh, the three books that I think helped me the most when I was first starting out. And I forgot to mention that was primarily landscapes. Uh, as you all know, I primarily do these creatures. I'll do another talk about um, those books later. <laughs> and I'll talk about those maybe another time. Yes. <laughs> In the meantime, stay creative and keep making stuff and you have an awesome rest of your week.